Hello everyone, this is Curtis again. Uh, just, we're going to go start working on the timeline of events in this video of the Holy Face devotion. But let's start with a prayer. Nomine Patris, Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. I offer this video series in reparation for the offenses against the Holy Face of our Lord Jesus Christ through the Immaculate and Sorrowful Heart of Mary with the intercession of the Most Chaste Heart of St. Joseph and St. Michael, the Prince of the Catholic Church. Okay, so like I said in a previous video, much of what I have here comes from this book that I got from the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face, writing to them. This is the Golden Arrow book um, from Tan, I believe. But I use this because this was translated straight from the French and has dates. That's where I get the dates for all these things. They were written in letters. So these revelations were made to this nun right here. Sister Mary of St. Peter, uh, Discalced Count Carmelite, OCD, in Tours, France. And so I left many things out because there's so many communications with her. I just kept some of the stuff that I thought was the most important. So let's start with the first one. So in April 14 or 1843, so these are 180-year-old devotion. This isn't new, anything recent. This is actually pretty old. has been really ne neglected by the church. So April 1843, our Lord and Sister, apply yourself to honor my heart and that of my mother. Do not separate them. Uh, I've seen this same idea in other devotionals that the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate and Sorrowful Heart of Mary always go together. Um, I even have a t-shirt where it has both of them on there. I don't like wearing the one that just has my sacred heart on it. It's because of that. So August 26th, 1843, our Lord communicates to her about blasphemy. Through blasphemy, the sinner curses him to his face, openly attacks him, destroys his redemption, and produces his condemnation and judgment on himself. He made me consider how blasphemy is like a poisoned arrow, which perpetually wounds his divine heart, and then made me understand that he wished to give me a golden arrow to wound him with delight or to heal the wounds of malice which sinners inflict upon him. Our Lord, in giving the prayer of the golden arrow, um, you can see a stylized version right here. Even has a little golden arrow right there. May the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most incomprehensible and ineffable name of God be forever praised, blessed, loved, adored, and glorified in heaven, on earth, and in the hells or in the hell on this, by all the creatures of God and by the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. And she says, as I felt a certain astonishment in my soul at our Lord saying to me in hell, he had the goodness to make me understand that his justice was glorified there. Sometimes it's also spelled in the hells like the other thing. At this moment, it seemed to me that I saw graces coming from the sacred heart of Jesus which have been wounded by this arrow in order to convert sinners. So November 24th, 1843, Association 4, Parent Commandments 2 and 3. Our Lord and Sister, the universe is covered with crimes, but the breach of God's three first commandments has angered my Father. The holy name of God blasphemed and the holy day of Sunday profaned, putting the summit to the measure of sins. These sins have mounted up to the throne of God and provoke his anger, which will burst out if one does not appease his justice. And no times have these sins been so great. That's saying a lot, considering blasphemy is so out in the open nowadays, uh, 180 years later. So he continues, I desire, but with a strong desire, that an association duly approved and well organized may be formed in order to honor my father's name. As well, I put as well as holy days of obligation by extension, since work is also disallowed except if you're like an EMT or some other critical occupation. Uh, just talk to your pastor as to what exceptions are. Sister says, Our Lord put me at the same time in the spirit of that which was said to Abraham, that if there were found ten just men in the sinful towns, they would be spared. December 7th, 1843. Our Lord and his sister on public reparation. And as the sin of blasphemy extends over the whole of France and is public, it is also necessary that this reparation would extend to all the towns of France and be public. Woe to those who will not make this reparation. 
Uh, in scripture, woe usually means damnation or chastisement from the way our Lord speaks. Also, the at the uh, general judgment, particularly like as you can see here in Luke 10, where he's like, woe to thee, Chorazin, woe to thee, Bethsaida, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Kepharnam. And by extension, this should, the sins of blasphemy extend over the whole of the United States of America, or whatever your particular country is, and they are public, public. So it's also necessary that reparation would extend to all the towns of the United States of America, or your country, and be public. February 2nd, 1844, Sister says, in the same way as his Holy Mother has adopted the Arch Confraternity, he adopts that of the reparation. They must go together, the one to repair the outrages committed against God, the other to obtain pardon, the one to Jesus, the other to Mary. But our Lord has made me understand that the association that he was desirous to establish in France had two aims, in the first place for the reparation of blasphemies, and the second place for the sanctification of the holy name of God, to expiate blasphemies and work on the holy day of Sunday, which are the principal sins which provoke God's anger against France. Uh, again, also holy days of obligation by extension. Th this one, thus one will join to the rules of the association in Rome. The associates will not work on the days forbidden by the church. They will not work at all, but will contribute all their efforts to prevent work on these holy days. It appears to me that our Lord desires that this association may be under the patron Nidge of St. Martin of Tours, a uh, 4th century Bishop of Tours, St. Louis the Ninth of France, uh, King, St. Michael the Archangel, and the next place that each associate says every day a Paternoster, uh, Ave Maria, and Gloria, that's the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be in Latin, and that act of praise which our Lord gave me under the title of the Golden Arrow with an invocation to the Holy Patrons. But on Sundays and feast days, they will say the entire prayers of reparation to repair the outrages committed against God on these holy days and to ask for the pardon of the guilty. My Lord, may me see this association like an army of valiant soldiers who are going to unite themselves to him as their head in order to defend the glory of his father. He desires that their name should correspond to the nobility of their function. They may me understand that for this reason, the association should have as its title the defenders of the holy name of God. He also made me comprehend that each associate should wear a cross on which would be engraved on the one side, Sit Nomen Domini Benedictum, that is, blessed be the name of God, and on the other side, Vade Retro Satana, that is, get behind me, Satan. He will give a special virtue to this divine weapon of combat, the demon of blasphemy, through the mouth of sinners. Each time they will hear blasphemies, they will say that which is written on the cross, thus they will wage war against the devil and render glory to God. So for size comparison, that's about how big the actual cross is. And then, as you can see there, that's close up and close up. How much time we got? Eight minutes. We're gonna stop there on this video.